What's up card fighters and welcome back to the Prime Vanguard channel. Today I have decided to torture myself and I've been show you my Sword Magician Sarah deck profile. Now before I can get into today's video, if you guys enjoy this type of content, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you guys are always up to date on my newest videos coming out. Now, as you guys know, I am not the biggest fan of Sarah. I have not said too many good things about this card. I put her in my disrespected video and I do stand by everything I say, but I will say that for the last month or so, well, basically when she came out, cause I got everything in, in the in my box, but basically when she came out, I've been playing this deck on the side. And I will say that it's not the worst deck I've ever played throughout all the eras of Vanguard, but it definitely is not something I will be going back to after this video. So I figured why not for the one time, for the one time, I'm gonna go ahead and make a deck profile on Sword Magician Sarah and show you guys how I feel about her and what I've come up with since her release. So without further ado, let's get right on into this. Naturally, the star of the show is four copies of Sword Magician Sarah. If you guys don't know what Sarah does, I don't blame you. She has the following effects. Act Vanguard Circle once per turn, cost Counter Blast 1, search your deck up for up to 1 grade 3, call it to Rearguard Circle and shuffle your deck. Until the end of the turn, this unit gets Continuous Vanguard Circle. All of your grade 3 rearguards get boost and power plus 2000. Auto Vanguard Circle at the end of the battle, let your drive checker field agree through your greater card. Put two normal units from your rearguard circle on the bottom of your deck in any order. Choose up to two grade three cards in your soul and call them to rearguard circle. So this card does a lot, but despite doing a lot, it doesn't matter. She's Sword Magician Sarah has a few things about her. So the thing is this, Sword Magician Sarah has various skills, but the problem with her is how they function together. Her first ability to call a greed three out from your deck is fine, allowing us to call out any greed three from our deck gives us easy access to any piece we need. However, this does reduce your chances of seeing greed threes during your drive check, meaning you might not be able to get additional attacks for the turn. Secondly, the continuous ability to make all the grade 3 rearguards get a boost in power plus 2000 is great, but the power increase is too low and she doesn't receive it herself, which means that she herself cannot become a number that hits over 4 step decks. To add on, it's also linked to her first ability that requires a counter blast which leaves you vulnerable to damage denial and she doesn't get the power increase. Sword Magician Sarah is a bastion clone for V Premium, but without the security of the ride deck and better grade 3 support cards, she will continue to struggle with consistency and defense. Moving on to our next grade 3 and the only saving grace of this deck, it is 4 copies of Artillery Man. Continuous Vanguard Rearguard Circle, during your turn this unit gets power plus 3000 for each card in your soul. Act Vanguard slash Rearguard Circle, once per turn, put two cards from your hand into your soul and draw a card. Auto Vanguard slash Rearguard Circle, when an attack hits, you may counter blast one. If you not put all of the cards in your soul, wait what? <clears throat> Auto, <clears throat> Art Artillery Man has the following effects. Vanguard Rearguard Circle, during your turn this unit gets power plus 3000 for each card in your soul. Act Vanguard slash Rearguard Circle, once per turn, put two cards from your hand to your soul and draw a card. Auto Vanguard slash Rearguard Circle, when its attack hits, you may counter blast one, if you did not put all of the cards in your soul into the drop zone. Artillery Man is our deck's win condition. Our goal is to soul charge and increase the power of our artillery men so they can become powerful boosters or attackers. Throughout the game, you will be utilizing him as a booster which gets you around his counter blast cost. You will never attack with him unless you have the setup for your final turn. Being able to swing for 43k columns means you've hit a high enough threshold that your opponent will either have to use a sentinel or take the damage. The second ability to take cards from your hand to your soul to draw cards is an ability you will take advantage of a lot as this is an efficient way to get more cards in your soul and potentially get better cards. Getting rid of a lot of great threes in your hand is the main thing I use Artillery Man for because that's why that you know two from hand to soul is just fine. Because I mean, if you're getting rid of two cards with no shield value from your hand, draw a card that potentially does have a shield value, then you, in my opinion, you really didn't lose out anything, you just plused one. For my next great three, I am playing three copies of Miracle Pop Ava and she has the following effect. Auto Rearguard Circle, when placed from soul, if your Vanguard is grade three, draw a card and soul charge one. Auto, when rode upon, counter blast 1, draw a card, and one of your vanguards gets power plus 10,000 until the end of the turn. Miracle Pop Ava is a resource card to help you soul charge additional cards and draw more cards out. You'll never ride her unless you have to, but if you do need to, take that turn to get more pieces and search for Sarah immediately. Because this card setting up into your next turn is not the greatest unless you have to, I just recommend you damage an eye, draw cards, get drive checks, and just boost up your soul as best as you can so that when you do find Sarah and go into that turn, you're at least set up to have a potentially 
better Sarah turn. For my next grade 3, I am playing two copies of Comicality Chimera. Comicality Chimera has the following effects of auto rearguard circle when it attacks, soul blast one and put one of your other rearguards into your soul. This unit gets power plus 5000 to the end of that battle, and if you're not counter charged this turn, counter charge one. Since Sarah costs a counter blast, we always want to make sure that we are able to have access to counter blast. This card being essentially a searchable grade 3 that gets power on its own, allows you to counter charge one so that you can set up for your next turn, is extremely important for this deck. I do think that the ratio is debatable, so you can play 2 to 4. I don't think you should play 1 because if you lose it out, you essentially lost out in your deck's only form of counter charge. But this essentially being another form of resource management besides Miracle Pop Ava that is searchable is extremely helpful for the deck as we can use this to always set up to make sure our Sarah is good for next turn. And then for my last grade 3, I am playing one copy of Silverthorn Beast Tamer Dorian. Silverthorn Beast Tamer Dorian has the following effect of Auto Vanguard slash Rearguard Circle. At the end of your turn, put all of your other rearguards into your soul. And draw a card for every two cards put into your soul for this cost. If you put four more cards, return a Curry 3 card with Silverthorn and its carnet from your soul to your hand and retire this unit on Rearguard Circle. Silverthorn Beast Tamer Dorian is only for the heavy control matchups. You always want to make sure that you're not losing your artillery man to Narukami, they're not being retired, or they're not being locked, or whatever happen other, other things could happen to your artillery man. Making sure you have access to at least two to three artillery men on board is extremely important. And Sarah doesn't generate a whole lot of advantage, so if you are playing its control matchup, the additional draw that this card gives you, you'll normally always get a plus two draw from her, and the additional soul benefits as well is extremely important. Because artillery man, when they come out, you'll have more cards into the soul, and you'll always have access to them via Dorian, putting them into Sarah, and Sarah calling them out from the soul. One of is fine. I don't think any more than one is necessary. This is a personal tech choice of mine. You have the option of playing that grade three that will retire something and then get power on her own. But because she costs a CB, I want to avoid doing that because of other CB cards in the deck that I'd rather play instead. Moving on to grade twos, I'm playing four copies of Pop Out Chimera. Pop Out Chimera has the following effects. Continuous rearguard circle, deck, soul, trigger zone. This card gets grade plus one. Auto, when this unit is placed at the Vanguard Circle, counter blast 1 and soul charge 3. If you soul charge 1 or more trigger units, draw a card. Continuous rearguard circle, if you call 2 or more cards from your soul this turn, this unit gets plus 10,000 power. So Pop Out Chimera is extremely important for the key fact that 1, this is a grade 2 that essentially is a grade 3 but not on text. I want to make that very clear, that's what it says in all the continuous effects. It's, second, uh, it's your ride target, you get the additional draw by potentially getting a trigger. If not, you get a soul charge three that will kickstart your artillery men going into your Sarah turn. So that this way you have targets for Sarah. And the fact that it's a searchable grade three is important as well. Because since we, since we do play Mass Grade Bunny and you play a lot of grade threes in deck, you can search this card out and essentially make sure that you're seeing your grade two onto your next turn. So that's a very important factor to note as well. But the plus take hit power does matter because this card is a good attacker, booster, um, grade 2 ride target that is searchable, and it takes care of essentially everything that you need for the deck so that it stays as consistent as possible. For my next grade 2, I am playing two copies of Estatic Baton Twirler, who has the following effects. Auto, when this unit is placed in the Vanguard or Rearguard Circle from hand, draw a card and put a card from your hand into your soul. Continuous Vanguard slash Rearguard Circle. During your turn, if you called one or more cards from your soul this turn, this unit gets power plus 5,000. A static baton twirler is nothing more than just another ride target that allows you consistently filter out your deck for better pieces. He helps you take out more grade threes from your hand and put them into your soul, so that this way Sarah has more targets to choose from. And for our next grade two, and a personal tech choice of mine that I've been liking so far, is two copies of Endive Beast Tamer. Endive Beast Tamer has the following effect of Act, Rearguard, Circle, Counter Blast 1, and Rest this unit. Choose a column and call up the two cards from your soul to that column's Rearguard Circle. A lot of the skills that you guys have seen from our grade 3s are skills that activate either A, when they're called from soul, or B, they require something else on the board to be put into the soul. So basically, we need a lot of cards on board to make Sarah work. Sarah herself even requires two normal units. I, I don't know why it had to be normal units, but she requires two normal units herself to be put to the bottom of the deck. So we really need a full board every single time we go into our Sarah turns to really take advantage of her without having any worries. So Endai Beast Tamer just does that. This card is... Um, counter blast one, you rest it, you get two cards out to a column. That's perfect, because you know who we're calling out? We're calling out grade threes or cards that could take advantage of being called out from the soul to give us more benefits. So we're calling out our Miracle Pop Avas to anywhere we want, getting an additional two card draw, two card soul charge, setting up for extra pieces. 
And we can also set up for our artillery man here and a booster here, our chimeras. We can also even take advantage of any grade one or grade two support cards that we do have in the deck. And we have a few that actually support our strategy. Her resting herself means that we can really put her back with Sarah's skill, or we can put her somewhere on the board that we can reuse her again, because you are gonna wanna take advantage of those skills that you have in soul. And being able to do that during the main phase means that we can, can dictate or control on what support that we're getting Being able to take advantage of this card during the main phase to activate all the main phase skills from being called out from the soul is extremely helpful for the deck and makes Sarah a lot more consistent while also maintaining a lot more power because of Sarah's skills to essentially power up your cards. This way we're not expelling so many cards from her hand to make up for the formation that we've lost from Sarah's skill. Moving on to my grade ones, I am playing three copies of Masquerade Bunny. Masquerade Bunny is your grade three searcher. Yes, despite all the grade three searching and support that we have for this deck, we need to ride Sarah. And we do need to re-ride Sarah because you wanna take advantage of the Excel 2 to get the additional power because 2K power just is not enough. So Masquerade Bunny turning herself into a magic number and also being a card that works well with the End Dive Beast Tamer that I just got done showcasing is extremely helpful as well. Moving on to my next grade one and a personal tech choice of mine because I haven't seen too many people playing it is four copies of Midnight Bunny. So Midnight Bunny has the following effects of auto rearguard circle when this unit boosts you soul charge one, auto rearguard circle when the attack this unit boosted hits. You counter blast one and put this unit into your soul and call a non grade one card from your soul to rearguard circle. So Midnight Bunny is a personal check choice of mine that I like because she gives something that Sarah does not have when I wasn't playing her and that's actual hit pressure. The fear of getting an additional attack before you go into Sarah is something that a lot of people do worry about because you're trying to play as aggressively as possible with Sarah. You do not want to play a long game with that card. Trust and believe you do not want to play a long game with Sarah. I'm telling you now. You are trying to play a very fast and aggressive game with Sarah. So this card applying with the fear of getting additional attack before you recycle it back with Sarah, whatever card you call out or this card, is extremely helpful and it's very potent. And even if you miss with this card, you're gonna recycle it back into the deck with Sarah anyway because you need a target. So it's not really so much a loss, it just means you couldn't take advantage of the extra cards you got. Because at the end of the day, you're still putting two cards back with Sarah, it just dictates on whether it's gonna be this card or the card to call out. For my next grade one, I am playing four copies of Engaging Assistant. Engaging Assistant has the following effect of auto when the student is placed in the Vanguard or Rearguard Circle from hand, look at the top five cards of your deck. Choose up to one grade three card from among them, put into your soul and shuffle your deck. Act Rearguard Circle, retire this unit. Choose a grade three from your soul and put it into your hand. If your Vanguard is not Storm Magician Sarah, choose a card from your hand and discard it. This card essentially is Sarah's own personal grade three searcher. He helps filter out your deck for more grade threes that you want to put in the soul. This way we're not losing out on trigger advantage. And he also filters out the grade three pieces you need. This card is going to help us reach our artillery men, our Kamikaze chimeras, our pop out chimeras in case you need to do that early because sometimes you might have to and filter out to make sure that we have everything that we need. It's a really good filter card and it's honestly a unique way of grade three searching, but this is a four of in the deck because it's your best consistency piece and it's very reliant on Sarah entirely. <coughs> For my starter, I play one copy of Happiness Collector. Moving on to my triggers, the deck is very simple. We play eight criticals, which is four poison juggler and four copies of dynamite juggler. So in this deck, I chose to go eight critical, four draw, four heal, because front triggers don't really work that well with Sarah. Remember, you use her skill at the end of the battle, so only the cards that were already in play will get the benefit of the 10k front trigger, and you're already hitting high enough thresholds of power, because there are grade threes attacking that have own power up effects, that the front trigger never really felt necessary. The additional pressure that critical triggers give you is what makes Sarah, well, one of the very few things that makes Sarah actually playable. So. Having eight criticals, in my opinion, is the route that I want to go to, and I just like the artwork of these two. I play four copies of Hades Hypnotist. This is your draw PG. The deck needs it. You still need to draw into pieces because Sarah herself doesn't generate too much advantage. And then finally, I play for triggers, I play three of the Heal Guardians. This is a must have. The deck itself requires it. It's a grade three, so it's a grade three that goes into your grade three count, which means that if you reveal this card for your drive check, not only do you get a trigger benefit, but you're also a grade three, which will turn on Sarah's skills.
Maybe I screwed the pooch on this one. Maybe I didn't make the best decisions, but Sarah is my first ever Pale Moon deck that I really ever played in V Premium. It's the only one that I've actually spent consistent, amount, consistent amounts of time on to think about. And while I don't think that there's no hope for this card, I definitely see why a lot of Pale Moon players are not a fan of it. And I don't even play Pale Moon. The card's effects don't really synergize that well. And overall, it has the... Well, it does have good grade three pieces. It just needs a lot more support. I think that in the next V Clan collection, they need to at least give this card something just to make it get more consistency and more power. Because right now, it's it's not working. I, I think that there were a lot of. I think maybe an Arata would fix this card, but I I don't know. I just don't think Sarah is a deck I'm gonna be visiting for a very long time. But not to end this video on a Debbie Downer. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you guys so much for staying tuned for this. And y'all have a great day. Peace.